to get for any of your crazy skiing. The trouble with you, Joe, you're afraid to take a chance. So you're going to buy a barber shop. Well, then what have you got? Barber shop. So what? A little security for the future. At least I'll know that my family's provided for. Yeah, got you that time. Someday I'm going to beat you to that outside cut. You know, this, this new idea of mine ought to click big for everybody. You'd stop your daydreaming, go out and get yourself a job. You'd be better off. Yeah, and so would we. Well, you let off me, will you, sis? And someday I'll show you. Well, I'm on your side, Uncle Felix. You know, if we're not careful, we won't get that vacation Uncle Felix promised us. You're going to start that again? I suppose you'd all drop dead if I treated you to a trip to Florida, huh? Yeah, from old age. <laughs> Uncle Felix is going to take us to Florida. The man said so. If it's just the same to you, I'd like to go to South Africa. Are we going in the subway? Oh, no. Uncle Felix is going to send his Rolls Royce after us. Would you like to ride up with the driver? Would you rather just loll in the back seat? I'd rather go on the subway. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Kid me all you want to. Maybe you like these tough winters. Well, Uncle Felix, spring is almost here. Do you know how I know? You know what? That spring is almost here. How? Because the flowers on my chin strips are bursting into bloom. I noticed that myself. Take your skates off the table, dear. Drink your milk, honey. I'm not hungry, Mother. Hurry up, Uncle Felix. Oh, what's the hurry? Where are you going? I'm going to Rockefeller Center. Uncle Felix is going to treat me. It's the third time this week you've treated Irene to skating. What's up? Why, well, Mom, um, I just get a kick out of seeing a kid enjoy herself, that's all. Any time you do anything for nothing. You've got something up your sleeve, and it ain't muscle. <laughs> I see, sis. I try to do the right thing, and that's the thanks I get. Don't be so touchy, Felix. Joe and I both appreciate the interest you're taking in Irene skating. Well, it's nothing at all. I just got a big heart. And mouth. I gotta get back to the shop. Nice lunch, Mama. Well, uh, don't work too hard, dear. Hey, Joe. What is this, another touch? I'm just gonna give you a cigar, that's all. Never mind, I got one. Got two? Put this on Jeeper in the Fourth at Santa Anita. Did you ever cash in on any of those beds, Sam? Shh. That's a sore spot with them. Yeah. I thought that horse had a chance to invest two bucks myself. Any time. He's got $2,000 in the bank, and he won't risk two bucks. Joe's right. You hold on to that two grand, Joe. You bet I will. I finance, eh? Yeah, and when he gets 500 more, he's going to buy the shop off Henry. <laughs> he wants to be the big boss. Isn't that right, Joe? Yeah. And if you're not a little more respectful, you'll be looking for another job. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy! Hello, honey. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, Irene, you mustn't do that. Oh, she's all right, aren't you? What's the idea? I thought you were going skating. I was, but Uncle Felix had an accident. An accident? Yes, he's lost his wallet again. He's afraid he'll have to borrow $2 to treat me skating. Well, I hate to shortchange Uncle Felix, but see if he can't get along in a buck. Well, your brother-in-law clipped you again, huh? Yeah. You'd think he was the barber.
What's the matter? It's a deal. You're a lucky stiff. I can just see you now lying on that sun-kissed beach under a big umbrella. I use my noodle, don't I? Irene! Aren't you rushing the season a little bit, Uncle Felix? What do you expect a fellow to wear in Florida? Raccoon coat? <laughs> oh, <laughs> me! <laughs> All I need now is a good suntan. Well, when are you leaving, Uncle Felix? Oh, tomorrow night at 6.30 on the Florida special. I really believe Felix is serious. What do you think I'm doing, kidding? It's a real ticket. It ain't serpentine. Here's one about your size, Jane. And if Joe can forget that barbershop long enough to enjoy himself for once, I treat him too. Well, what's it all about? What's it all about? Yeah, but for tomorrow do? night, it's a drawing room. Yeah, what's, what's, the, catch? what's the catch? Oh, if you found a pearl, you'd want to know the oyster's pedigree. Come clean. Tell us what it's all about. Well, it's simple. A fella's got a cafe in Palm Beach, so I dug up an agent and made a deal for Irene to skate there. Now, what's wrong about that? You mean Irene's going to skate in a cafe and in Florida? Sure. Two hundred bucks a week, a free vacation for the family, and I'll wangle that five hundred dollars for Joe's barbershop, too. I'll take care of my own barbershop. Joe, I knew you always misjudged Felix. Now, there's just one little thing, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's that? You'll have to advance us hundred and fifty dollars to start us off right. <laughs> what do you think you're Felix now? Oh, I can hardly believe it's true. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet, honey. You like the daisy? Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. What's an orchid? Why don't your mother come back and have a drink? She's with Irene. We wanted to rest so she'll be in good shape when we get to Palm Beach. Good judgment, I calls it. Hey, George. Yes, sir. So what is your name, anyway? George. Well, bring me some cigars. What's the best you got? A Corona Coronas. Well, bring me a half a dozen. What do you have, Jane? All I need wouldn't go bad. Yes, ma'am. Bring me another silver fit. Yes, sir. Uncle Felix, I've been thinking, shouldn't we be more conservative? You know, taking that 150 from debt. Oh, where's your vision? Oh, I'm, I'm awfully sorry. Oh, it's my fault. Oh. Say, listen, sonny boy, the young lady doesn't want to ride piggyback. But she dropped something. It, it rolled under the seat. Excuse me, I'll get it. Well, help yourself. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, where are you from, sonny boy? Uh, Joplin, Missouri. First trip to Florida? Yes, sir. Well, you like it. Uh, would you recommend the Harper House? It, it's not on the beach, but it looks pretty good. They include meals for $35 a week. Very reasonable. Uh, Never heard of it. <clears throat> Here you are, sir. And your seagull. May you keep the change, George. Thank you, sir. Hey, George, what's the best hotel in Florida? Oh, uh, let me see. I think they say the Raw Florida Hotel. That's it. Couldn't think of it for a minute. Hey, Doc, give me a cab, will you? Yes, sir. Taxi? <laughs> Silver Palms Cafe. Yes, sir. Not bad, huh? Not bad. Gee, she's wonderful. What's eating that guy? You know who he is? Who? Leopold Eddington. And who's Leopold Eddington? His uncle was the South American Copper King. He just kicked off and left the kid a million bucks. You don't say. Well, how did you know? Oh, I've been waiting on him. His first trip to Florida. He's lonesome. Lonesome? With a million bucks? <laughs> yep. Just don't know what to do with his money. Well, with the rates they charge here, he'll get rid of it quick enough. Can I do anything for you, Mr. Eddington? Oh, I don't know. What is there to do? Oh, there's plenty to do down here. There's... Bathing and golf and tennis, the races, horseback riding. Say, they sure soak a fella lot at this hotel, don't they? I'm moving out. Ah, oh, what do you care? You got plenty. Yeah, well, that's no reason for them to stick me. Gee, she's wonderful. Oh, you mean Miss Barton? Well, if you spend any length of time down here, you'll certainly meet her. Oh, I met her on the train. It didn't do me any good. There's a big blowout at Silver Palms Cafe tonight. Why don't you take that in? What for? Oh, I've got a hunch that Miss Barton will be there. Yeah?
All I can say, Mrs. Barton, is that your little daughter's just got everything. And you just wait until you see the beautiful costumes that I've designed. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd better run along now and see that the child isn't too excited. <laughs> You're excited yourself. Who, me? Yes. Oh, my dear boy, I never get excited. Oh, dear. <laughs> What did I tell you? Everything's on ice. Oh, there's Mr. Eddington. Huh? You remember, on the train. Oh, that palooka. Oh, he looks lonesome. Let's invite him over. Why do you have to pick up with all this riffraff? He looks like a nice boy. Oh, do us look, Mr. Miller. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I am going to invite him over. Ask Mr. Eddington if he would like to join us. Now you're going to spoil <laughs> everything. Your looks in this setup, you could grab yourself off a millionaire right while we're down here. Oh, Phoenix. You might have Mr. Miller's table, sir. You mean it? Yes, sir. <laughs> Riffraff fumbles. They're in a huddle. Riffraff takes time out for water. Second out of one to go, and he breaks away for another Shh. touchdown. Hello. This is my mother, Mr. Eddington. How do you do, Mrs. Barton? Hello, Mr. Miller. All right. Excuse me. A slight accident. Well, that's nothing. I used to work in a gas station. Once I knocked over a 10-gallon can of oil. And what happened? It spilled. <sighs> so you used to work in a gas station, huh? I suppose you saved up a couple of years for this trip. Oh, no, you seem... All right, my boy, don't apologize. Saving is an excellent habit. Miss Barton? Yes? Well, I was wondering... Uh, 
You see, I, I bought an automobile today and... A brand new Twin 8 Super Sedan, I suppose. Well, it's not new, but the motor's in fine shape and it was a good buy. That's right, son. A penny saved is a penny earned. Well, I was wondering, maybe you'd like to go for a ride tomorrow. Well, that would be swell. Gee! Uh, excuse me, I'll get Ivy. Is that all right with you, Mrs. Barton? Quite certainly. Of course I can go, Mr. Eddington. Oh, gee, thanks. I'm sorry, sir, but there's no parking here. I know, but I'm waiting for somebody. Now, okay, let me run this show. You'll find out that I know what I'm doing. I... You wouldn't listen to your Uncle Felix, would you? Good morning. Hello. Morning. Does it run? Well, I'll say. They made much better cars ten years ago. Ten or twenty. I thought you might like a picnic, so I brought some lunch along. Well, that would be lovely. Excuse me. Well, what am I supposed to do with this? Brother, that's your problem. You're the doorman, ain't you? I guess a fellow in your spot can get the lowdown on everybody, huh? That's right. A Turkish bath is one place where you can feel right into a guy's soul. I remember a senator. Nick, am I next? One ahead of you, sir. I'll be in the steam room. Will you call me? Yes, sir. Hey, who's that guy? He lives right here in the hotel. Funny I haven't seen him before. What's his name? Harrison Gregg. Got dough? Well, he wears the finest clothes. Handmade silk underwear, custom-made shirts. I'd pick him as a fellow with plenty sugar. I think I'll take a steam. Didn't you just have one? Yeah, I know, I know. But I'd like to take another steam after a massage. Is uh, this seat taken? No, sit down. You know, I'm getting bored down here. It's a little off-season. Oh, you've been here before? Sure, sure. This is my tenth visit. I always come down here for the winter. This hotel's slipping a bit lately, though. Not what it used to be, don't you think? Well, I wouldn't know about that. This is my first trip. Well, Miller's my name. Glad to know you. Greg's mine. Well, glad to know you, Mr. Greg. Miss Barton, do you... do you mind if I call you Jane? Why not? And I'll call you by your first name. <sighs> That'll be swell, Jane. You certainly have a way with the girls, haven't you, Leopold? I have? Oh, I'm glad. I didn't know that. Well, it's a good thing you didn't. You would have broken a lot of girls' hearts. <sighs> well, I never exactly had a best girl. You're young yet. You know, my mother told me that every man with the right kind of incentive could make his mark in the world. Mother sounds like a very sensible woman. Maybe if... Maybe if... Maybe if what? Don't be angry with me if I say it, will you? Well, say it, and then I'll tell you if I'm angry or not. Well, don't... Don't take this wrong, but... You'd be a good incentive. All right. I'll be your incentive. Oh, gee. Hey, you better look at your brakes. Oh, I looked at them when I bought the car. Besides, they're guaranteed. But the car's moving right along. Oh, it's all right. That's what you think. I guess the guarantee ran out. Oh, that's too bad. Just after you spent all that money for it. Gee, I've been trying to live on a budget down here. This is going to shoot it all to pieces. Now, in the budget, did you allow for a, a thinking fund? Gee, you got a swell sense of humor, Janie. Have I, <laughs> Leopold? <laughs> But, Uncle Felix, we don't need a governess for Irene. Jeannie, why do I have to have a governess? Mother and I can take care of her between the two of us, can't we, Mother? Well, if... How's that gonna look? Mr. Gregg will think we can't afford it. Why will Mr. Gregg think we can't afford it, Janie? Well, it's too deep for me, Irene. 
Why, Uncle Felix? Now, that's all right, honey. <laughs> well, we can't afford it, can we? Oh, don't worry, dear. Uncle Felix says everything's going to come out all right. You know, I think this skirt's just a little bit too tight. Our expenses are twice what Irene is earning. And yet everything is going to be all right. I suppose that's a respectful way to talk to your mother. I'm not talking to mother. I'm talking to you. Did you mean that for an insult, Jane? Yes. You did, huh? Yes, I did. That's all I want to know. See, Elsie, I had it all fixed up with Mr. Gregg. He's primed to meet Jane. What did you tell Mr. Gregg about me? I gave you a build-up. What do you think? What kind of a build-up and why? With your usual exaggeration, I suppose. Now, Jane. Well, I don't want to meet you, Mr. Gregg. There you are. So thanks, I guess. Oh, Jane, you'll be all right. Was Mr. Gregg really interested in her? You bet he was. I promised you Janie would be the millionaire, didn't I? I, I do, do not... not have to skate for money. I do it because I like it. Our yacht... That is out of commission this year. Boy, the beach. Balmy weather. Reminds me of aix le or Deauville, don't you think? Yes, but uh, more like Deauville. Well, I guess you're right. Don't you think so, Miss Barton? Well, I don't know. I, I've i never been there. Oh, well, spend a season there. You'll enjoy it. Oh, are you going to Europe? Well, not right away. Uh, Jessie's really got a heart of gold beneath that decadente exterior. I don't see anything wrong with her exterior. Well, she's pampered. It's like I tell her father. Too much money will turn any girl's head. Oh, I think you're doing Miss Barton a great injustice. I think she's perfectly charming. Aren't you, Miss Barton? What is it? Uh, charming. Yes, isn't it? No, uh, I mean you. Oh, thank you. That crumb's just a train acquaintance. We've been trying to dust him off ever since we've been down here. Yeah. So I see. <laughs> oh, Irene, darling. <laughs> <laughs> you are a little fresh. <laughs> I've uh, told my sister a hundred times she's going to spoil Irene, letting her escape professionally. I guess you wonder why we let her do it. Yeah. Well, ever since she learned to late with offers, so Elsie didn't see any harm in letting her take one or two of them. Do you say something, Felix? Mr. Gregg thinks you'll spoil Irene, making a public exhibit of her. Awfully cheap idea, Elsie. Oh, I... Oh, no, no, no. Quite the contrary. I think you should feel uh, very proud of your daughter. Oh, I am. I don't have to skate for money. I do it because I like it. Yeah, Miss Anne's that, dear. Our dad is out of commission Not now, dear, not now. Uh, Miss Telfer, please. So, you have a yacht. Uh, Janie, the ocean looks great. Why don't you and Harrison go for a swim? Yes, how about it, Miss Barton? Well, thank you. Not now, come on. Cheer up, Sonny. There's other fish in the sea. Yes, you're right. That's a proper spirit. Now, your vacation is nearly over. Be a good sport. Off to experience. What's on your mind? Oh, a few little things. Don't you think it's about time Irene was getting a little more dough? More dough? <laughs> I've just been wondering how much longer I was going to keep her on. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Don't be stupid, Mr. White. Business is great. Everybody loves her. As a matter of fact, I was going to ask you if you could advance me a little bit on Irene's salary. You've overdrawn all our salary already. Yes, I know. But confidentially, I'm in a bit of a hole. Couldn't you give me a hundred bucks? Not a chance. Why? I've already told you why. 
And now I tell you another thing. I don't like you. You get in my hair. Goodbye. Hello, uh, give me the manager, please. Oh, hello. Uh, this is Harrison Drake speaking. Embarrassed about that check bouncing back. I must have used an old checkbook. And I'd forgotten that I'd closed my account in that particular branch. Well, I'm expecting a draft on Monday, and if it's all the same to you, I'll settle the whole thing right then. Yes, I realize it's three weeks, but... I'll fix the whole thing up on Monday. I appreciate your courtesy, and thank you very much. Give me Miss Barton, please. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Gray. Yes, yes, just a moment. Janie! It's for you, dear. It's Mr. Gray. I think he's interested in you. What do I care? Hello, Mr. Gray. Thanks ever so much for the candy and flowers. I tried to get you on the phone to thank you, but you were out. Well, I'd like to, but... I have an engagement tonight. Well, I have an engagement tomorrow, too. It's Mr. Gray. Hello, oh, Harrison. Hey, what goes on? Oh, she did? <laughs> what do you want to kid Harrison for, Jenny? Oh, no, no. She just wanted to see what you'd say, that's all. Huh? Sure, sure. She says it'll be okay for tonight. All right. Goodbye. Uncle Felix, I wish you'd mind your own business. Why, Janie, I forbid you to talk to Uncle Felix that way. All right, Mother. Uncle Felix, not meaning to be disrespectful, but I'd appreciate it if you'd let me choose my own friends. After all I've done for you, you can at least be courteous to my friends. And it wouldn't hurt you a bit, so long as Harrison has invited you out to do this for me. Well, I don't like his attitude. I don't want to be rushed. Besides, I have a date with Leopold. Oh, that, that's what I wanted to tell you, Janie. I just came from the Silver Palms, and your friend Leopold was making a date with a hat check girl for tonight. I don't believe it. He has a date with me. So what do you see in that guy, anyway? I like him. He's a nice boy. Well, I admit he isn't sophisticated, but I like him. Told you once before he was a phony. Well, I can pick him. Why do you think he's hanging around you? He likes me. Oh, that's a laugh. He thinks we're rolling in wealth. We're celebrities. Celebrities? And living off of Irene's money. That's another thing I don't want to go. going to stay here. Just as Uncle Felix says here, until we bring home the bacon. Have you seen my blue scarf anywhere? Oh. The same, Janie. If Leopold stands you up, you will go out with Harrison, won't you? Oh, I suppose so. Are you angry with me for being so persistent about this evening? Oh, no, that's all right. I really did have a date, but he didn't show up. I guess I'm losing my popularity. Your popularity has hit a new high with a certain fellow I know. Are you staying here much longer? I don't know exactly. I almost went home yesterday. Oh, are you leaving? Not now, since I met you. You're very flattering, aren't you? Oh, there's a distinction between flattery and a compliment. And I meant that as a compliment. And very sincerely, Jane. You use words very well, Mr. Gregg. Why the Mr. Gregg? Just a mark of respect. Send that collect. Yes, sir. Got a cigarette? Thanks. You got a match? Thanks. That's lovely, Irene. That's fine. Now, Irene, flutter your hands like a bird and, and walk like a penguin. How does a penguin walk, Mr. French? Oh, with great dignity. Like a well-mannered duck. <laughs> like this? Well, well, not exactly. All right, Irene, honey, that'll do. Wrap it up, French. Oh, but Mr. White, you haven't given me a chance to explain my idea. This is something entirely different on ice. 
All the skaters are made up like birds, and little Irene is discovered inside of an egg. Who laid it? Now, the father bird. Oh, the father bird laid it. Elsie, Elsie, listen to this. I'm not sending $200. Unless I have the $2,500 by next week, Vincent is selling, and we can all on relief. So can your millionaire, if he listens to you, Joe. How do you like that? Oh, what are we going to do now? If Greg had only popped the question, that'd settle. Oh, how are you going to do that? Joe won't send you the money. Now, I can hardly blame him. Oh, Joe's a piker. I knew all along he'd lose that barbershop. We'll give a big party and invite all the swells. Then maybe we can enough. Well, how can you afford it? Leave it to me. We'll spare no expense. This party's got to be the talk of the season. Now, I want plenty of those hors d'oeuvres, dainty sandwiches, imported cocktails, uh... You just leave everything to me. Now, may I have your check? Just, just stick it on the bill. Don't you think your account is already a little out of proportion? I'll take care of that. Then I'll expect to check the day of the party. Sure, sure, don't worry. I won't. What do you charge to wait? Whatever the meter says. I don't trust those things. Thank you, sir. Well, I thought you skated very nicely, Irene. And I thought you were wonderful. Daddy! Daddy! <laughs> Gee, I'm glad to see you. I presume you're Irene's father. Yes, I am. I'm Miss Tilfer, Irene's governess. Oh, pleased to meet you. <laughs> I thought you were surprised to see me. No, I knew you coming all the time. How'd you know that? Uncle Billy says as soon as you heard how wonderful everything was, he bet $10,000 he'd cut yourself in. Uncle Felix got $10,000? He's going to have a million dollars. Uncle Felix got a yacht, too? A yacht is out of commission this year. What else has Uncle Felix got to say? I do not have to skate for money. I do it because I like it. Nice gab to teach a kid. Where's your mother? At the party. What party? Mrs. Barton and Mr. Miller are giving a cocktail party this afternoon, sir. I don't say. Come here, let me take your skates off. Well, I might as well learn the worst. Who runs this shindig, anyway? Mr. White is the manager. Now, uh, pick me up on the way out. Come in. Uh, Mr. White? Yes. Uh, my name's Joe Barton. I'm Irene's father. Well, I'm glad to know you. Sit down. Thank you. I just got in. I'd like to get a little inside information. On what? Well, a, a lot of money. I'm trying to buy a barber shop. I'm liable to lose it if I don't work fast. Oh, that's too bad. Is there uh, anything due, Irene? No. Mr. Miller has already overdrawn our salary. I was afraid of that. Seems to be a specialty. Quack, 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 quack. Oh, Mr. White, this is the idea of the act. You see, I'm the doctor. Wait a minute. Where are your manners? Oh, pardon me. I, I guess I was a little... This is Irene's father. Mr. Barton, I have the most exquisite number for Irene, and it'll only cost $2,000. Maybe you could convince Mr. White. Oh, sorry, but that's a little out of my line. I uh, better look up my family. Good luck to you. Thank you. I may need it. Oh, but Mr. White, it'll only cost $2,000. That's just the point. Who's going to put up the $2,000? Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Hello, Daddy. Hello, honey. Oh, there's Mr. Eddington. Hello, Miss Telfer. Good afternoon, Mr. Who's Mr. Eddington? Cheney likes him. Oh, she does, does she? I do, too, but Uncle Felix doesn't, and I know why. Why? 
because he's a riffraff. Hello, oh, Mr. Eddington. This is my daddy. Oh, well, I'm glad to know you, Mr. Barton. Friend of Janie's, eh? Uh-huh. Why aren't you over at the party? What party? Well, that Fandango my brother-in-law's giving this afternoon. Oh, well, why don't you come along? Oh, I can't do that, sir. Why not? Well, Mr. Miller says I shouldn't be always butting in. What do you care what he says? Well, you just said he's the one who's giving the party. I know, I know. Uh, oh, uh, miss, uh, miss, why don't you take Irene out on the beach and give her a little sun, let her have a little fun, it'll do her good. I think so, too, Mr. Barton. Bye, Daddy. <laughs> so long, honey. Come on, I need moral support. I need company. Don't worry, Jane will show up. You know how women are. Like keeping dangling, make them anxious. Say, I wouldn't be a bit surprised the way you've been acting that you and Jane have some kind of an announcement to make. Aren't you a bit presumptuous? Ah, don't take much to figure this out. After hearing the way Jane raved about you when she came home. Naturally, we're investing Irene's money for her. You know, a penny saved is a penny earned. You know what that darling child wants to do? She wants to buy me a chinchilla coat. I do know. My husband can well afford to buy me a chinchilla coat. Chinchilla? <laughs> Isn't that just a little old-fashioned? Isn't it? Oh, well, but of course you wouldn't expect a little girl like Irene to keep up with all the styles. <laughs> you know, I just thought of something funny. What's that? You'll have to show me their proper respect and call me Uncle Felix. Well, after all... Say uncle, you old son of a gun. Say uncle. <laughs> you know, uh, when Jane comes in, if I were you, I'd rush her off her feet. Make it a sort of prize party. Holy smoke. What's the matter? Nothing, just somebody I haven't seen in a long time. Hello, Joe. Where'd you drop? I'm glad to see you. Come on in here. I want to talk to you. Hey, excuse me. Son of a... Oh, Mrs. Barton. Now we're here. Start talking. Sure, Joe. What's on your mind? Plenty. Who's paying for that party out there? What's happened to my money? Boy, I'm glad you're here. Everything's on ice. It looks like it. Joe, dear. Where did you get those duds? Like it? Well, that's where the money's gone. Jenny going crazy, too? Now, look, Joe, in just a minute, you'll see it all our way. The trouble is, you're thinking of that barbershop. You bet I'm thinking of that barbershop. If I haven't lost it already, clean that gang out of there before they pick up another nickel's worth. Joe, they might hear you. I don't care if they do hear me. Get them out of there. We're going home. Now, you listen to Felix for once in your life, Joe, before you spoil everything. And quit button in. Because Janie's going to be engaged to a millionaire, and that's going to fix up everything. And he's a fine man, and you're not going to spoil Janie's life like you spoiled mine. Like I what? Ever since I married you, I've been cooped up in a little hick town like Brooklyn. Nothing but a haste in washing dishes and making beds and cooking. Just a barber's wife. <clears throat> I guess it's you and me needs a little talk, Elsie. Let me tell you something, Joe Barton. You've made the drudge out of my sister long enough. And this is one time she's not going to listen to you. She's going to listen to me. Is that right, sis? Yes. You mean that, Elsie? Yes. Oh. <laughs> All right. When this ball blows up in your face, maybe you'll be glad to come back and be a barber's wife. Oh, I am sure. Seen Janie anywhere? No. Is there any place to stay around this town where they won't take the fillings out of your teeth? Well, I'm staying at the Harper house. It's reasonable, but very nice. Sounds good to me. Let's get going. Now, Joe, please. When you want me, I'll be at the Harper House Hotel. Oh, we do. <laughs> well, for everybody happy, oh, the joy reigns supreme. <laughs> drinks, plenty of food. You know, those unexpected visitors, they do drop in. Well, that's the way it is with life, my boy. I'll be 50 years old next Wednesday, and the one ambition I had was to own a barber shop. And all I needed was 500 bucks. I think only a barber shop would be great. Have you any relatives outside of your mother? No, sir. That's right. Don't ever have any relatives. Well, I guess I won't have any. Looks as though I won't ever get married. It's all off. You don't mean to say you're really serious about Janie? I certainly was. But I lost out. Maybe you could help me fix things up. Oh, no. That's one thing I'd never do. I'd never butt in on a love affair one way or another. Oh, you really liked her. Oh, yeah. I'm crazy about her, Mr. Barton. Janie's a good girl. Real stuff. I know it. 
Thank goodness you're not a millionaire. Oh. My girl's happiness means everything to me. Well, what would you advise me to do? I never thought Janie's head would be turned either. Tell you what to do. If you really love her, go out and make her love you. But I haven't had any experience. Son, that's one thing you don't need any experience in. Women are awful hard to understand. You're telling me. Well, it's like I missed a great party. Your mother's been carrying on this way for an hour. Janie, you played us a dirty trick. By not showing up, I suppose. Well, I don't want any part of your schemes or any part of Mr. Harrison Gray. Oh. I never thought you'd let us down this way. And how have I let you down? Well, Janie, everything's up to you. But what have I got to do with it? They're closing, Irene. We have all these bills to pay. And your father's lost the farmer, Joe. What? Yes, listen to this. Mr. Joe Bart. Sorry, couldn't wait any longer. Have sold barber shop to Sam, Vincent. But how come it's addressed to Daddy down here? Your father's down here. He's at that cheap harbor. He's spoiling everything. Daddy's down here. What a break. Now, wait a minute, Janie. Did I tell you our only way out? Harrison Gregg is a great fellow. He's rolling in wealth. Just because he's a millionaire is nothing against him. Can't you try and learn to like him? Give him a chance. Poor Daddy. And he had his heart so set on that barber shop. Hold everything, Janie. Gregg can buy ten barber shops. Now, play ball and this will come out all right. Give me Harrison Gregg. There's nothing to it. Now, what are you up to? Hello. Hello, Harrison. Janie asked me to call you. Yes, she just got back. She says she's awfully sorry, and she'll explain everything. Yeah, yeah, she wants to see you. Say, how about dinner tonight? Huh? Sure, it's a date. <laughs> On the brink of destruction. What can I do? Hello, Mr. Eddington. Hello, Irene. I just dropped in to say goodbye. Would you say goodbye to your mother for me and... Janie, too? Yes. Are you going home? We're going home, too, I think. Oh, when? I'm not going to skate here anymore after this week. I'm fired. Why? Mr. French cried. He's completely frustrated. His expression's cold thorn. He's in the shadow. Oh, I don't get it. The shadow of a great affliction. He's in the brink of despair. But why? Because Mr. White won't bankroll the penguin number. Oh, well, that's too bad. His hopes are wrecked. Our fortunes are lost. I'll have to come down from my high estate and Betty can buy his barber shop. Now let's get this straight. I don't care about this, honey. I'll get a job. A lot of responsibility owning a shop. I wasn't quite sure whether I wanted to own it or not. I know differently. Uh, what's all this gab about you going to marry a millionaire? Well, he's a nice fellow, Daddy. Yes, and... That's all. You'll... Well, I could do a lot worse. And what else, honey? That's all. Money isn't everything, you know. I can still take care of you. <sighs> oh, met your friend Eddington. Looks like the whole town's interested in you. <laughs> He's a nice kid. Well, I thought so too for a while, but... Well, he turned out to be an awful dad. Were you disappointed? Yes, I was. Well, if you were disappointed, maybe you liked him. No. Look at me, darling. Promise you'll take a long time to think over, will you? Well, I have to get married sometime, Daddy. Yes, of course. Marriage isn't just an incident. It's your whole life. Well, I know, Daddy, but just because a man has money, that's no reason I shouldn't like him. Oh, that sounds like Uncle Felix talking, not you, Jane. Well, I know my own mind, Daddy. I'm not a baby. I hope you're not making a mistake, honey. 
Gee, you're a sweet daddy. Thank you, Mr. Eddington. Now, you think I can make Joplin in this heap? You can try. What'd you do, trade in the old car for this new one? Well, not exactly. You can have the old one if you can dredge it up. Bye, Mr. Eddington. Bye. Hey, Leopold. What's the idea? Well, I'm leaving. I looked for you to say goodbye. Ah, I better change your mind. Looks like this Greg fellow's got the inside track with Janie. You're going to let him get away with it? How can I help it? Well, yeah, guess you can't. Of course, it'd be a good idea to clear up your misunderstanding. See Janie before you go. You know, uh, leave him laughing when you say goodbye. I'll give you an inside tip. I know Janie. She's not in love with that lounge lizard. Well, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to say goodbye to Janie. That's the... Good luck! Greg. He would like you to meet him at the side entrance in 10 minutes. Tell Mr. Greg I'll meet him. Yes, miss. where Janie is. I don't, but I have my hopes. You're interfering. She's going to marry Greg and you can't stop her. Oh, can Get me Harrison Greg. Well, ring him again. Don't you dare. Stop, I tell you. I'll show you who's running this family. <laughs> oh, don't. Stop, don't, please. Oh, oh. You brute. You dope. Oh, Gio. Oh, I'll be a good girl from now on. You know we can't pay for all these things, honey. We've got to go back where they came from. A jewelry, you got to take that off. It's got to go back, too. Oh. Not a word out of you, understand? By the time I take care of the hotel bills, I'll just have enough money to pay the railroad fares. We're all leaving for home tonight. Except you. And I'm not going to pay for that party you gave. That's charged to you. That's your worry. That's what I wanted to find out, Mr. Barton. Your statement, Mr. Miller. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, here, uh, my friend Greg will take care of this little item. That's a laugh. Your friend Greg can't even pay his own hotel bill. Daddy, they're going to put on the pendant number. Mr. Eddington, bankroll Mr. Finch. Mr. Finch calls him an angel. Ah, oh, where would that sport get $2,000? Why, Mr. Eddington is a very wealthy man. He's a millionaire. Huh? What? What? Oh. Oh. Four little bears up north are we. Proud of our polar ancestry. Filled to the brim with bearish glee. Four little bears are we. We're gathered here to tell you we're going.
a four-star feature preview of a coming blessed event. The father bird is all a flutter, nervous as a bird can be. The only words his tongue can utter, will it be a he or she? They face the space and then retrace the place they faced before. And as they face the place they face, they seem to worry more. Where is doctor? Where can he be? Where is the doctor? Oh, where can he be? It be a great position, quite forgot his urgent mission. Someone better SOS for the then drop OMD. Here comes Dr. Quack with his waddle, 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 and his dignified old waddle, and his satchel on his back. Yesterday I was considered just another also ran. Yesterday I was a penguin, but today I am a man. Yippee! Sky, mother, your wings and all your moon. Oh, 
to your sky, mother your wings and all to go over the mountains white with meeting you here. You never can tell, can you? Now you see here. What's it all about? You'll find out. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy Bob Barton. Happy birthday. Are you happy, Daddy? Well, I am. And I only hope that my first customer is Felix. Uncle Felix cut himself in. Yeah? The man paid him $500 to jack up the price on Leopold. Ooh, 